Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I print off my layout plans in uh, full size to be used as templates for cutting out plywood. There's only a couple steps and uh, I'll walk you right through the whole process. So just a quick little introduction of why I ended up doing this. Um, as I started layout construction of the bench work and uh, I got to the point where I needed to cut some sub road bed it was all good if I was doing like a simple like a, a straight curved section that was you know constant 36 radius all the way around that was easy but then I got to these pieces where there's a complex like S S curve like this one here that wraps around this curved staircase or some of the other complex curves that the computer generated on the layout planner uh, for easements and stuff like that I just couldn't think of any other way to translate my uh, plan that was on a like, digital plan from the computer and uh, translate that onto, my, onto a piece of plywood so I could cut it out so I just um, I basically decided that the only way I could do it was to print off these full size plans on paper cut them out by hand and then put them on the piece of plywood and use it as a template to cut out these pieces and it's worked quite well uh, so far okay so obviously we've got our uh, digital layout plan is what you need for this I guess if you knew what you're doing you could just uh, make the templates yourself on paper but my plan has complicated curves a whole bunch of them so I use the digital layout planning software called AnyRail um, I've done a I've done a little video on it before on how to how to make a plan on any rail but uh, so I have my digital plan here and like most track planning software it's pretty straightforward okay so I just click uh, export as a JPEG and the only thing we want to do here is make this uh, this dots per inch um, as high as possible 586 is the highest that any rail allows and then you just hit OK all right, so we exported the file from, uh, from the layout planning software onto the computer as a picture JPEG image. Um, so then I use Corel Draw, that's the software editing program. But if you, whatever you use, you could use Adobe Illustrator, or whatever, whatever you use and you're comfortable with. Um, Corel Draw is what I like to use. So in this, you're gonna make. So what you want to do is uh, up here make the layout or the um, the size of the image you're going to work with the exact dimension of your space of your layout so that it will uh, scale to one to one that's very important because you want obviously you don't want it to be scaled down it's got to be a hundred percent one to one for this to work so you put your layout dimensions up here I've already got mine in so then we'll just go ahead and uh, import the JPEG image that we just did So it uh, gives you just a, a click and drag thing here. Should open up to close to the right dimensions, and you can just fine tune it. Make sure it's the correct uh, dimensions of your layout. 357, and uh, then you can just zoom in on a corner to get it perfectly right. There. So just like that, now we have a working image on a grid in one-to-one -one scale. And now you can work with this. So if you had a printer that was capable, you could just print this off. But there aren't many printers that can do like 30 feet. So a common size that I found, and I'm not sure, I don't know a whole lot about printing, but 4x3 is considered a blueprint size. And it's quite uh, common for lots of print shops to be able to do that. So that's what I ended up doing. So what I would do is make another image that's four feet here one two three four by three one two three and then I just kinda cut and paste take the uh, you know use cut and paste to just take the pieces off of this main plan and paste them over onto here and try to get as much as I can in each sheet to, right, to save money because you don't want to be printing as ma too many because they're I, the cheapest I found was about three bucks a sheet uh, staples was seven dollars Canadian a sheet so it does add up, so you want to you wanna do it as economical as possible. And uh, I just did a whole bunch of these. I had, uh, I think I had seven or eight last time I went there. But uh, 
Staples even, they told me after I, the last time I went there, they can actually print unlimited length, um, three feet wide with unlimited length. So that's even better. I wish I would have known that because it would have been a lot less work to make all these four by three pictures. You could have just went made one really long three foot one and they would have printed it off on a roll. So, But that's it. So then I, um, I was doing it at a print shop, like I said, for I think two or three bucks a sheet. But then their blueprint machine broke down. So the last time I went to Staples and I just took my USB in there and gave it to the front desk and uh, they had them printed in like 10 minutes. So it's pretty, pretty easy. And once you, once you do that, now you've got the paper copies. So you bring those home and then I'll show you what I do uh, on the next step. And one other thing too, I'll show you, I'll talk about just before we go look at the paper copies. But uh, not only is this good for track work, but I'm going to use it for um, cutting out the rivers and the, and the roads and everything because I don't know, back maybe six months ago, I was talking about on one of the layout updates using Google Earth to measure roads and rivers and stuff for the layout. So uh, all these these rivers, well, especially like Marantz, this one I kind of just, Marantz Curve, the Bull River here, this is like, a, I took a measurement on Google Earth, as well as uh, this road here in Banff and this creek. So they're all accurate measurements. So on the, when I go to build them and cut the, the road bed out for these, these are the actual widths, accurate widths of the road. So I've printed these out in uh, on paper as well, and I'm gonna use them to help help planning the templates. Roads isn't so much if it's just a straight rectangle, that's kind of easy. But a weird looking piece of river like this that, you know, it might just save some time printing it off and just using the, using the paper as a template. So there's more than more applications than just uh, than just cutting out for track work. So after you get them back from the print shop, these are the 4x3 sheets that I uh, got last time I was there at Staples. And uh, one quick easy thing you can do is just to make sure, put the put a ruler on it so you can see uh, that's a 12 inch ruler. Just measure the grid that's on the background and just confirm that it is the correct scale. So you get these four by three sheets and uh, like they look kind of, they look pretty messed up because I've actually got about, what's there, one, there's two, two pieces of, of, the, of the road bed inverted in this one I took. So that's one there. And then this piece here flips and goes, gets taped onto this one to make the next piece. So I kind of got better at it as I went and cookie cutter to, to cram more on each sheet to, uh, to save money on the printing. But uh, so once you uh, get them home, then you just really low tech method of uh, cutting them out with, with scissors and uh, taping them together. And I usually go for straight sections, it's always eight feet because then I can put that on a piece of plywood and uh, get the most you know road bed out of a single piece of plywood as possible but curves it's kind of tricky so so like I was saying for curves uh, after doing a bunch of sub road bed I've ended up with all these really weird shapes so lots of times I will uh, vary the length of the pieces I put together to maximize the uh, the usage of the w whatever plywood I have left and sometimes it works out really good and sometimes it doesn't you have to cut into a new piece but uh, try to make that uh, make the most of the plywood because Having less joints, I think, is better, in my opinion, on the sub road bed. You want to have the least amount of joints possible because it uh, just makes the track work better. So, uh, cutting it out, really low tech, uh, just a pair of scissors and a piece of scotch tape on there. That's 5 eighths of an inch. And that's kind of my, uh, I don't know, that's the common measurement I found that I've been using for my sub road bed. That basically uh, makes sure that the the sub road bed ends at the edge of the cork. So uh, for single track, it ends up being about two, just over two inches wide. So all I'll do is I just line it up, and then I just run the scissors along like that, and I just cut the pieces out. So after I've cut them out and um, I got the various pieces, I uh, will put them together. And it really depends on uh, on what what section you're on. Sometimes they can be three or four pieces of paper taped together, and uh, it helps to leave markers to leave a, a, like quite a bit on each end when you're printing them. And that way you have uh, reference points for for taping them together afterwards. Uh, this one is one I'm working on right now. This is a good example. So this is uh, where's the there's a joint right here taped together, and there's another joint at the very end of it. 
zoom in. So there you can see the first joint. And so there's a like four foot section there. And then at the end I ended up with a weird one just, just based on where I was with the sub road bed. Right on a bridge just happened to be. So that uh, eight foot section there translates into that straight piece that I'm working on right now. So that one was easy. Um, really probably didn't need a template for that one. But it helps to kind of set, um, you know, you're figuring out where bridges and stuff are going to be. So uh, that straight piece was really easy to do. I just ripped that one on the table saw. But uh, the more complex ones over here, like these curves. This this curve here is actually a 250 inch radius. So that'd be pretty tough to do with the uh, with my old trammel point, homemade trammel point there. It actually, well, it would be impossible to do. You can't. It's not physically enough room to have a trammel point that long. So that's where uh, the uh, the layout planning software and printing off these templates comes in really handy. Doing stuff like you know a ridiculous 250 inch curve like that. So that's all there is to it, guys. Uh, you know, three or four steps to. Uh, Print off your layout track plan in uh, full size one to one scale to use for uh, making templates for cutting out plywood. Hopefully you found this video helpful. As always, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.